Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Okay, so let's talk more specifically about the salary cap situation for the New Jersey Devils because they're actually in a pretty uh, good spot money wise. Is it time to push the team forward or should we just continue to go at that slow, steady pace that we're going at right now and just continue to draft and maybe get players under the radar? Or is it time to just make another splash signing similar to what they did with Dougie Hamilton last offseason? And how does this tie in with silly season? Well, we have a lot to discuss in this episode. Buckle up. You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. Alrighty, now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Chalky, play by play announcer, and also Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. Damn, what can I say? The Stanley Cup playoffs is getting more intense, and I was two for four in Game 7 predictions. I got the Oilers and Flames outcome right. I was really trying to pull for the Maple Leafs, but they just cannot get past the first round. I don't know what it is, but they cannot keep doing it because it's going to make today's episode that much more interesting because I'm going to get to the reason why the Toronto Maple Leafs cannot keep like doing what they're doing, which is failed to get out of the first round because it's really going to hurt them in the long run and it has to do with their salary cap situation. So once again, we'll get to that a little later in the episode, but I want to tell you something first. There's some big ownership news coming out of HBSE, which is the entertainment company that owns the New Jersey Devils and also the Philadelphia 76ers. It's been revealed that President Hugh Weber has announced that he is stepping away from the position as president of the company, according to the press release that was uploaded by NHL.com. Here's what Weber had to say about his resignation. He said, I am honored and humbled that Josh Harris and David Blitzer entrusted me to help build and lead their sports entertainment business nine years ago, playing a role in the growth of our teams, venues, community patterns, and more importantly, the people who comprise HBSC has brought me great pride. HBSC is in the hands of some of the industry's best and brightest, and it's time for me to transition on to my next challenge. I want to thank Josh and David for their friendship and confidence in our leadership team and their accomplishments while treating me and my family as part of their families throughout my time here. While we achieved much, there are even greater goals and possibilities with incredible people in place to continue and grow. So how does this affect the New Jersey Devils? Realistically, it it doesn't because Tom Fitzgerald is calling all the shots, the general manager. So once again, for any of you who are not familiar with HBSE, they're the entertainment company that owns the Philadelphia 76ers, the New Jersey Devils, also their minor league team. So the Blue Coats, which is the G League team for the Philadelphia 76ers, and then obviously the Comets, which is the AHL team for the Devils. So once again, this does not affect the New Jersey Devils at all. I just thought uh, some of you might want to be uh, kept in a loop as to what's going on with the uh, HBSE company. So once again, this is more of a company issue than it is a New Jersey Devils issue. So it does not affect the New Jersey Devils one way or another. So uh, since uh, that is taken care of, let's move on to the offseason approach for the New Jersey Devils. So one of the things I like to do during the course of the offseason is talk about silly season. So for any of you who are not aware of what I like to do during silly season, I like to get reports I see off the internet. I like to go based on my hunch. I like to go based on team needs and just give you guys my overall thought process as to what it's going to take to get this specific player onto the New Jersey Devils roster. I've already done a couple of silly season episodes during the course of the offseason. So uh, in the past, I've talked about Kevin Fiala. That was a couple episodes ago. I talked about Morgan Riley. That was last summer. And then I talked about Carey Price. That was about a month ago. So some of you might think that I'm you know drunk with power or that I'm out of my mind thinking the New Jersey Devils could obtain some of these players. But I just want to say it's silly season for a reason, guys. It's not meant to be taken all that seriously. However, there is always a truth to it. So one of the reasons why I talked about Kevin Fiala, Carey Price, and Morgan Riley is because 
all three of those players are on teams with salary cap issues and the New Jersey Devils are in a decent position in terms of salary cap to possibly obtain those players doesn't mean those players are going to come to New Jersey I'm not trying to plant that sort of seed inside your guys mind I'm also not just playing the shell video game and playing franchise mode and turning on force trade that's not where my mentality comes from it comes from reports I see on the internet it comes from whether or not a player wants out of their current situation and whether or not the New Jersey Devils should pursue this specific player so I like to do it you guys seem to enjoy it so uh, once again guys it's not like an official report saying that this player could come to the New Jersey Devils it's more of a hypothetical situation and what's it going to take to get that player so uh, going back to what I was saying moments ago, most of my silly season episodes do have some truth and meaning behind them. So when we're talking about Kevin Fiala, you obviously know the Minnesota Wilds salary cap issue because they're going to have to let go of Kevin Fiala or somebody else. They can't keep the roster that they have because I'll explain that a little later in the episode. Then when you look at a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs, what did I just say a couple minutes ago? The Toronto Maple Leafs cannot keep being a first round exit because they got players to please. You got, you got to pay Austin Matthews. You got to pay Mitchell Marner. You got to pay John Tavares. You got to pay all those guys. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to try to pursue Morgan Riley last offseason because I saw a report saying maybe the New Jersey Devils could obtain him. The price would be a little bit high or maybe someone like Jack Campbell, who's uh, said to be an unrestricted free agent. So it raises the question, what's going to happen to the Toronto Maple Leafs? Because in terms of salary cap, their team is in the red. So like I've been saying the past few episodes, I've been saying that the New Jersey Devils should take advantage of some of these teams that are in the red, that they're in a situation and maybe the New Jersey Devils can try to capitalize on it or someone like Carey Price. Look, I know Carey Price is a fan favorite with the Montreal Canadiens. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. I know it'll be hard to let him go. I haven't personally seen him in any like trade reports, but I'm just saying, guys, like... Uh, they cannot keep a hold of Carey Price. He's aging. He eats up a, a lot of their salary cap. And in, in terms of salary cap, what salary cap for the Montreal Canadiens? They don't really have any wiggle room. And that's why they're going to have to just get rid of some of their players. That's why they're so excited to get Shane Wright because they finally get a bona fide player to just try to uh, add to their roster so that way they could get back to what they once were or just try to show some signs of improvement. Because let's face it, this season for the Montreal Canadiens, a complete far cry from what they were able to do last year. I get that they had to deal with a lot of injuries. They also had to deal with COVID because we all know how strict Canada's COVID restrictions were. So I, I get that the Montreal Canadiens, similar to the New Jersey Devils, weren't really put into a favorable position. But getting Shane Wright, that can do wonders for their organization. But when looking at someone like Carey Price, is he really in the long-term solutions? I get that they just got him back after he decided to take a hiatus from the game of hockey to focus on his mental health and also his substance abuse. But Overall, my, my mentality for Carey Price is that I, I know that he has a no trade clause and I, I get that he has all the leverage, but he really has to sit down and think about like, does he really want to keep his career going with the Montreal Canadiens? Are they really going anywhere? Because I feel as though he can get more improvement if he comes to the New Jersey Devils, just because the Devils have, you know, the offense or defense is starting to get there. The one issue that the New Jersey Devils had uh, that was really keeping them down, like was a complete ankle chain on them, was their goaltending situation when Mackenzie Blackwood and Jonathan Bernier went down. So am I, you know, overstepping it a little bit? Maybe, but I just want you guys to just have that overall thought process or that overall perspective that I'm just trying to present to you guys. So there's always a truth to my silly season. And I call it silly season for a reason because it's meant to have fun and just not be taken all that seriously but at the same time there could be some truth to it because last year I got a silly season uh, prediction correct in which I said that Dougie Hamilton could potentially join the New Jersey Devils so you know there's that right there so my thing for like Morgan Riley, Carey Price, Kevin Fiala and a few other players that I've done silly season episodes for there's always a truth to it because I, I want to go back to a, a silly season episode that I did in regards to Rasmus Ristolai and I said the New Jersey Devils should not pursue him because I think the Buffalo Sabres were asking for a little bit too much for Rasmus Ristolai and obviously due to Jack Eichel and his trade discussions there was obviously uh, a, a lot more focus on Eichel and his situation compared to Ristolai but could could we have gotten Ristolain? Sure, but I just felt like he is really overrated. I felt like his overall production is just, you know, it, it's like on the cuffs of either being good or just below average. And I just felt as though that's not really going to help us in the long run. And the Devils have made better trades and gotten better assets. So of some that come to mind are like Jonas Siegenthaler and Ryan Graves because both of them 
Um, Ryan Graves was on the Colorado Avalanche and he was in a shadow of great defensemen. And now here was his chance to just be the main guy. And I felt as though he held down his uh, ground nicely. And then for someone like Jonas Siegenthaler, he got little to no playing time with the Washington Capitals, but we traded like a third round draft pick for his services. And Siegenthaler has been one of our more consistent defensemen. So we didn't need someone like Rasmus Ristolainen because I felt like he was very overrated. Could he help on special teams? Sure. But I just felt as though in terms of five on five, it, it's really not worth it. I just felt as though uh, there were better options out there. And I don't I don't understand why the Philadelphia Flyers to this day decided to trade their first round draft pick and also I, I believe a second round draft pick in 2023 for his services. I don't really get that. And also the New York Rangers trading away Buchnevich for Sammy Blay. And then ultimately uh, the New Jersey Devils made that even tougher pill to swallow when P.K. Subban inadvertently hurt uh, Blay and that shut down his uh, season. So overall guys like when we're talking about silly season, there's a truth to it. And I feel as though the New Jersey Devils could pursue some of these guys that I do my silly season episodes on. But I just want you guys to just have an open mind when it comes to that. And one of the situations that we're going to talk about is salary cap for some of these teams. Because some of these teams are in the red when it comes to the salary cap issue. And the New Jersey Devils are in the, in the green. And I'll talk more about the salary cap situation for the Devils momentarily. But first... It's time for the first live read this morning, and it comes from our friends at Bet Online. So, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your sport betting needs, sports, and info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, MLB scores, NHL playoffs, fights, and even the next NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. And now the second live read comes from our friends at Built Bar. So here's the thing. I want to get you hip to birthday cake puffs. So imagine dipping your finger into that plastic tube of birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing it was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That is what it's like to eat a birthday cake puff from Built. I just received one and I've never had anything like it before. It was soft. It was easy to chew. They're available right now and we can't promise that they're going to be there tomorrow. So get them today at Built.com. If you haven't tried the puffs, I'll let you in on a little secret because that's what friends do, right? A chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, you heard me. Delicious flavor. Marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. Make every day your birthday with Built's uh, birthday cake puffs. Built has even taken delicious experiences into biting into a slice of birthday cake. And it's in 100% white chocolate and added sprinkles. With 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, and only 9 grams of sugar, this limited time flavor is an amazing option if you are looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety in your day. All Built Pops are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Go to Built.com, get birthday cake puffs now. The offer is go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Okay, so let's talk about salary cap issues because All About the Jersey.com recently released another article in regards to what the Devils should do this pending offseason involving trades and signings. One of the topics they discussed was the Fiala issue. So according to Cap Friendly, if Minnesota does absolutely nothing this offseason, then they will have roughly $3.5 million in cap space. They absolutely will resign some of their restricted free agents and fill in any gaps from unrestricted free agents leaving uh, the team. The problem is that Fiala is one of those restricted free agents. He made $5.1 million last year. His qualifying offer, the amount that the Wild uh, have to offer to keep his rights, must be $5.1 million. The Wild do not have $5.1 million in cap space. That is the problem, and the whole league knows it. And the thing with Fiala, he had a really good season because he had an 85-point campaign. And so you, you, you know that a team like the New Jersey Devils are just going to try to pounce on the Minnesota Wild. So the Wild could keep them. However, they would have to create more space to do so and have the space to do all the other signs they need to have a full roster. Again, the salary cap plays a role in a lot of what these teams can do. So if you're curious about the New Jersey Devils' salary cap situation, well, Cap Friendly has helped me out once again. So as of May 12th, the Devils have $54.9 million in cap hit on books, $2.2 million in dead cap, zero in bonus overage, 57.1 million in cap hit, 25.3 in projected cap space. So once again, the New Jersey Devils are in the green 
when it comes to salary cap issues. So once again, when I do a silly season episode, I really want you guys to think about the salary cap situation for some of these teams. So when discussing Kevin Fiala, you just heard the salary cap situation for the Minnesota Wild. So honestly, I, I even asked one of my colleagues this, like what's it going to take to get Kevin Fiala off your hands? He said the second overall pick and Jack Hughes. And I said, you are out of your mind. That is not going to happen because why on earth would we trade you? Well, first of all, we, we're not going to trade Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes is off the books when it comes to trade discussions. And when talking about that second overall pick, look, I get that second overall pick can be a seller, but I just don't think Kevin Fiala is worth the second overall pick. And I think a lot of you can attest to that as well. So my overall mentality for Kevin Fiala is that we have the cards in our favor because you know the Minnesota Wild are going to do whatever it takes to just try to satisfy their salary cap situation. They botched it with Kevin Fiala. They have no uh, room to just try to be picky as to who they could potentially get. And the New Jersey Devils have a great opportunity for the Minnesota Wild to maybe benefit in the future because we have a lot of prospects and maybe you can get a late uh, draft pick. So I'm not saying like first round draft pick, but maybe second round draft pick or something like that. Maybe I'm sure a lot of people would be more willing to negotiate in that regards. But in terms of Jack Hughes potentially being traded to the Minnesota Wild, I, I, I don't even know why I have to discuss this, but you know, I'm, I'm just going to be fair, which is the Minnesota Wild don't have the salary cap uh, space to get Jack Hughes because he probably forgot that Jack Hughes signed an eight-year extension with the New Jersey Devils during the course of this year. So his contract does not come cheap. That's going to put you guys in like the dark red, the dark, dark, dark red. And that's going to take some other uh, players to trade alongside with Fiala as well. So um, I would, I, I would love Kevin Fiala on this team, but I don't, I don't think it's going to, you know, cost the devils a second overall pick because, uh, the thing is like, I touched upon it early on in the episode. I talked about some of these, uh, trades that happened, uh, before the draft, which is, you know, I thought about Ristolain. I thought about Buchnevich and I thought about all those players that you saw just being dealt away for essentially nothing. I remember seeing a report saying that the New Jersey Devils traded away like Yanni Kwokinen and Will Butcher for the services of Connor McDavid. I was just like, you know what? If that were to happen in real life, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised because some of these trades were awful. So I don't think it's going to take the second overall pick, quite honestly, to obtain Kevin Fiala. I think it's going to take a prospect or two, but I'm not willing to give away Holtz or Hughes. So they're off the table. Our big three is off the table. And definitely Pavel Zaka is going to have to play a factor in that trade. So once again, when you're looking at a team like the Minnesota Wild and when you're looking at a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs, yes, they might be playoff teams. Yes, they might make deep runs in the playoffs potentially. They have a lot of good players on that roster, but it does not come cheap. It does not come free at all. So uh, the one advice I have for New Jersey Devils is do not get greedy. Look, I know we're in a pretty favorable position to just move our organization a step or two, but I, we got to do it in the right conservative way. We cannot just get greedy. And some of you might already be aware of this, but I'm actually open to possibly trading away the second overall pick. So I would love Cooley or Slavkowski or Nemish, whoever we end up uh, drafting if we don't trade away that pick. But the one thing I just told you guys was be a little open to possibly trading away if it's for a top-notch player. The one thing I do not want the New Jersey Devils to do with that second overall pick is use it in a trade to obtain a goalie. Because remember a few years ago, we traded, I believe, our ninth overall pick for Corey Schneider, that that's something we cannot do because look how Corey Schneider turned out. Goalies can only give you like in, in this league, like three to four years max in, in terms of good uh, productivity. So my thing is like, we're not going to get someone like Marty Brodeur who sticks with our organization for 15 years because we would have to go young and some of these uh, players are wild cards. So I'm just putting that out there, but digressing a little bit. I am for like trading away the second overall pick. I'm for just keeping it and, you know, possibly drafting Slavkowski or Nemish or Cooley, whatever the case might be. I'm open to that too. And, and I'm also open to Tom Fitzgerald possibly making a trade or two to try to help us win the offseason. So that's my overall mentality when it comes to the New Jersey Devils and their offseason approach for this year. So something I might do in the next episode is talk more specifically about the teams that are in the red and some certain assets on those teams in the red that the New Jersey Devils could have their eye on and try to pursue. So some teams are in the red, according to allaboutthejersey.com, courtesy of Cap Friendly. They said the Montreal Canadiens, the Vegas Golden Knights, the Tampa Bay Lightning, Boston Bruins, Toronto Maple Leafs, Minnesota Wild, 
Florida Panthers, San Jose Sharks, Philadelphia Flyers, and the Dallas Stars are teams that are in the red in terms of salary cap flexibility. Some of the teams that are in the yellow and kind of hovering on the danger mark are the Edmonton Oilers, the New York Rangers, the Washington Capitals, and also the Carolina Hurricanes. So it's good that the Carolina Hurricanes and also the Edmonton Oilers and also the New York Rangers are doing what they're doing in the playoffs, which is moving on to the next round. Because if you're a team hovering on the red and the green, you might want to see your success right now because your window is still somewhat open, but now is the time to do it because you don't want to be like the Toronto Maple Leafs and get in the red and now you're in a situation you don't know what to do. So uh, that's a that that's actually good for some of those teams. But a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning, they literally are back-to-back Stanley Cup champions. So they can like unload anytime they want. And then when you look at a team like the Philadelphia Flyers, a team that is in the red, a team that finished dead last in the Metropolitan Division, they're not really in a good situation right now. So the Florida Panthers uh, being President's Trophies winners, uh, they obviously need to capitalize on, on it right now. And then if you're a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs, I, I'm really sorry, but you're in the red. You you keep getting knocked out of the first round. You, your room for uh, just trying to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals is just shrinking by the moment. So you know, Mitchell Marner uh, showed some emotion in his post-game interview. I know they're tired of it, but I think the realization is starting to set in with Marner, which is the Toronto Maple Leafs, it it might be their time uh, sooner rather than later to just, you know, get rid of some of these players because they can't keep playing devil's advocate, no pun intended, with the salary cap because they're going to put themselves in a very unfavorable position when it is time to rebuild. And then a team like the Pittsburgh Penguins, yes, they're veteran heavy, but they're in the green when it comes to salary cap. So they're kind of in a somewhat decent position. And then for a team like the Vegas Golden Knights, especially with the firing of Peter DeBoer as their head coach, you know Vegas is kind of in a in a messy situation right now because uh, they've been unable to make deep playoff runs uh, aside from, you know, make it to the Stanley Cup Finals in their inaugural year. But uh, when looking at this season, failing to reach the playoffs in general, and then the last couple of years just uh, failing to reach their overall goal of making a deeper playoff run, it kind of hurts them in that regards, especially since they're a team in the red. So once again, that's something I'll do uh, in the next episode, uh, barring anything uh, major happening within the Devils organization or the NHL in general, because that's something I'm curious about, and I'm sure you're curious about too, which is let's look at some of these teams more specifically. Let's look at some of these teams that are in the red, and let's see some specific assets that the New Jersey Devils could have their eyes set on. So I think the Devils are in a decent position to try to capitalize on it, especially with how trade packages have been the, the last couple of years. I believe the New Jersey Devils are in a perfect situation to possibly, you know, trade a prospect and get, uh, you know, a big name player. And essentially it didn't cost them anything, but maybe a prospect and a few draft picks. But once again, open to trading that second overall pick. So let me know what you guys think about the salary cap situation for New Jersey Devils. They are in the green, but is it time to put their foot on the gas pedal and just try to stack up and try to win? Or should they be a little more conservative about it and just, you know, draft Slavkovsky or Nemish or maybe uh, Cooley, whatever the case might be, and just try to continue doing what they're doing? But uh, I gave you guys my thoughts, and definitely we're going to talk about it as the offseason progresses a little more. But as for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.